Welcome to BMC's Control-M Batch Impact Manager, or BIM, Advanced Features video. If you haven't seen our BIM overview video, we recommend that you view that video first. In this video, you will learn about advanced functionality in BIM that you can use to either prevent issues from occurring in a BIM service or to troubleshoot issues in a BIM service. Some of the functionality crosses over to the forecast domain. Specifically, we'll talk about estimation assistant, projection, what-if scenarios, using forecast BIM rules, what if scenarios using Y, and last, what if downtime. Note that if you are using BIM for the first time or for new applications or jobs, you can use these tools to troubleshoot differences between BIM's estimations and the actual runtimes. Let's begin with the Estimation Assistant, which is available in Control-M version 9. The Estimation Assistant is a troubleshooting aid that helps you identify the first job that causes a problem in a BIM service that results in the service not completing. For example, when a job in the service is expected not to run and you want to locate the problematic job. To use the Estimation Assistant, in the Monitoring domain, you open the Service Monitor. Here we have a BIM service that is projected to be late because a job is expected not to run. We'll select this BIM service and click Analysis. In the service, you select the BIM job and then click Estimation Assistance. In the dialog box, you choose the issue that you are having. The first option, Does Not Run, applies to our scenario. This option is one of the more common options. You would select Should Not Run when you have a job that doesn't run, but BIM shows estimated start and end times and you would select the Runs Too Late or Early options if you know when your jobs are supposed to run. Our BIM service is projected to be late because a job will not run, so we'll select Does Not Run and click Suggest Why. The message tells us which job is the problematic job. Let's click the job link to go directly to the job. Now we know which job is problematic, but we don't know why. We'll use the projection feature to get more information. Continuing with our example from the Estimation Assistant, we'll use projection to get information about why the job is not running, specifically the last event that caused the job to not start. Let's right-click the job and select Projection. If you have enough information from the projection, you can resolve the issue at this point. Note that you can use projection on any job, not only jobs in a BIM service. Now let's move on to what if scenarios. You use what if to evaluate various ways to solve an anticipated problem in a service by experimenting with the service. When you experiment, it's a local simulation. This means that only you can see the changes that you make. It does not affect the active jobs database. You can change the conditions of a job, change resources to proactively assess whether jobs will take longer than usual to run, and prevent a service from being late by giving the jobs a higher priority or more resources. Going back to our example from the Estimation Assistant, we see that the resource amount was set to zero and we need to increase the amount. We can click Add to add a what-if scenario and increase the resource to one to see how this affects the service completion time. We see that the service will complete, but it will be late. Let's find out which job is the problem by selecting Problematic Jobs in the bottom pane. We see that the job Time 5 o'clock is problematic. Let's right-click the job, select Projection, 
and then click plus to see which jobs are using the same resource and at which time. We have a couple jobs using the resource. We can edit the what if that we created and change the number of resources. Let's open the what if and change the resource amount from 1 to 3. We see that there are no more problematic jobs. The service status is OK, and the service will complete on time. Note that the background changed to blue, indicating that what you see is a local simulation and doesn't affect the Active Jobs database. If the simulation solves your issue, remember that you need to make this change in the Active environment. It's important to also see how the change affects other BIM services. You can see this in the bottom pane by clicking the Service Monitor tab. Here we have another BIM service that was affected by the increase in resources. Its original status was Will Not Start, and now it's projected to be late. Next, let's take a look at Forecast BIM Rules. If you have a job in a BIM service that requires a manual action, we recommend that you set up a forecast BIM rule. A couple of common scenarios of when to use a BIM rule is when you have jobs that require user confirmation or when you need to decrease your resources for a specific period of time, as in our BIM service example where the resource was set to zero and we needed to increase the resource amount. Creating a rule enables BIM to take these manual actions into account when calculating the job run times and service completion estimates. First, we'll take a look at the user confirmation scenario. Let's say that you have several jobs that require user confirmation at different times. Because these jobs require user confirmation, the status of the BIM service will be late and the estimation end time will be will not run. You can use a forecast BIM rule to notify BIM that these jobs are manually confirmed. After you create the rule, the BIM service will show that it will complete. In the service monitor, we'll click Analysis, and then we'll click Forecast BIM Rules. We'll click New, and select the confirmation rule. We'll leave Average Job Start Time selected so that BIM will project that the job will start at the time it is usually confirmed. In the Control-M Server field, we'll select the server, and in the Application field, we'll select the relevant application. This means that the rule will apply to all jobs in this application. And now we'll click OK to create the rule. The rule is selected by default, so we'll click Save to apply the rule to the system and then click Done to exit the dialog box. Note that it can take a few minutes until the rule is applied to the BIM services. If you want to confirm all jobs at their average start time, in the CCM, we recommend using the system parameter Execute Confirm Jobs, setting it for both BIM and Forecast, with a value of 2. Now we'll talk about creating a BIM forecast rule for a scenario where you need to decrease a resource for a certain amount of time. Let's say you have a resource that someone is setting to zero for 15 minutes to do another function, for example, a backup. And when the backup is finished, the user needs to increase the resource. Because the resource is set to zero at some point in time, BIM will issue an alert that the service will be late. This happens because BIM sees that there's a job that needs the resource and the resource is set to zero, so BIM issues a false alert. We want BIM to know that the resource will be available. We can do this by defining a forecast BIM rule. Last time, we created the forecast BIM rule from the analysis window. You can also create Forecast BIM rules in the Tools domain. In the Tools domain, we'll select Forecast BIM rules. Let's click New, and this time we'll select 
Quantitative Resource. We'll select the Control-M server, and then select the resource. We'll increase the resource to 4. In the Time field, we'll enter the time when the resource will be available. Click OK, and then click Save to apply the rule to the whole system, and click Done to exit the dialog box. Remember that it can take a few minutes until the rule is applied to the BIM services. You can set rules that will apply to any job, not only jobs in BIM services. Next, let's take a look at Forecast Y, another tool you can use to get detailed information about a job in order to help resolve an issue. In this example, which is similar to the example that we saw in the Estimation Assistant, the service will be late and won't complete. As we did before, from the Service Monitor, we'll open the Analysis window. The BIM service is already selected, so we'll click Estimation Assistant and select Does Not Run. We'll click Suggest Y, as we did before, and click the link to the problematic job, Job 1. We'll right-click the job and select Projection. We see that the job should start at this time in order for the service to complete on time. We also see that it will not start at this time because the job is waiting for its time window, which is from 3 to 4. From this information, we don't know why it's not running from 3 to 4. To find out what the problem is, we'll go to the Forecast domain. In the Forecast domain, select the current date. To quickly find the service, we'll click Services, locate our service, and click Open. Let's right-click Job 1 again, and this time we'll select Y. Here we see the job is waiting for its time window, and at 3 o'clock, the resource it needs is not available. We'll click Add to create a what-if simulation and increase the resource. Now we see that the job runs and the service will complete on time. Last, we'll take a look at what-if downtime. You can use the what-if downtime scenario when you have a time frame where a server will not be available. For example, if you need to perform maintenance on the server. If you have jobs that are supposed to run during this time frame, you can hold the jobs instead of having to kill the jobs during the downtime. What if downtime tells you which jobs you will need to hold during the downtime? You can experiment with the downtime time frame, for example, making it earlier or later so that the least amount of jobs are affected. When using the what-if downtime scenario, we recommend to go to the forecast domain so that you can see the whole system. In the forecast domain, select the date that your server will not be available, and then click Open. In the right pane, we'll add a what-if scenario and select What-if Downtime. First, select the Control-M server, and then select a specific host if relevant. Last, select the time frame that you want to check. In the bottom pane, click Forecast Analysis List and check the Influenced by What If Downtime checkbox. In the Estimated Start Time column, you can see the amount of jobs affected by the downtime. We can change the time frame to see if less jobs are affected during another time frame. We'll double-click the what-if downtime that we created, and we'll choose a different time. In the new time frame, one job appears in the list. This is the job that would need to be placed on hold. It can be helpful to save what-if downtime scenarios 
for tasks that are performed on a regular basis, such as maintenance or backups. To save a what-if downtime scenario, click Save As, enter a name, and click OK. The next time you want to check which jobs will be affected during a server downtime, you can select the what-if downtime scenario from the drop-down list. Thank you for watching this video. For more information about BIM, watch the BIM overview video or read the Control-M help.